Welcome to this example. This is going to demonstrate how to complete a fictitious homework assignment that I'm calling Assignment Zero. I prepared an example assignment here. So let's look generally at what the assignment asks us to do. So it would like us to create a program that echoes a word differently depending on the word that's passed in. So the assignment executable is called crow, and then you provide some word on the command line. So if the word is snow or corn, then it's echoed in this way with a new line at the end. If it's any other word or more than one word, it should just be echoed with a new line. If no word is passed in, a usage statement should be printed that prints the two paragraphs above. So the assignment name is crow, and the program has to be able to pass in and handle uh, command line arguments. So we're going to go essentially from 0 to 60 in creating this assignment. So if I go back and look, the assignment name is crow. Oh, sorry, the executable name is crow, but the assignment is called assignment 0. So I'm going to go back here and create a directory called assignment 0, and then go into this assignment 0 directory. So the question now is, what other things do I need to create in this assignment directory? Here you can refer to some information that's found on the Piazza website. So under assignments, general assignments, we see a coding style and standards document and an assignment requirements document. So first I'm going to look at this assignment requirements, which I've already loaded here. So here it tells a little bit of information about C++ and CMake. It reminds us that we only submit homeworks to Dropbox on D2L and then we're going to grade them on a Linux server. So here is the information for how the assignment will be compiled. So it's going to go into some directory called assignment directory with net ID in front. And then it's going to run assignment name. So here's the recommendation for how to create this assignment directory. I need a CMake lists and a readme and then a source directory that contains all of our C, header, and CPP files. So I'm going to go back now and create some of these files. Because I'm doing this from the terminal on a Mac, I can use a command called touch to just create the file names. So let's touch cmake lists.txt and touch readme.txt. So now those two files exist here. I'm also going to need to create a source directory and in that source directory a cmake lists.txt. So I can actually do both of these at the same time. I can make dir source and then touch source cmake lists.txt. So now if I do an ls of the source directory, I see that I have a cmake lists already there. And the source directory is one of the directories that I have available to me. So I'm going to go ahead and edit some of these files. I tend to use vi when I'm doing examples because it stays inside the current window. So here's cmake lists.txt. And I'm going to call this project assignment 0. And even though I've got the project's name figured out, I also need to add a subdirectory called source. So the reason I need to add this subdirectory called source is that I need to look inside of the source directory for my additional header files and C files. And you'll recall this isn't done for Caprice. It's required in the assignment information. Oops. It's required here in the assignment information that I need to keep all of my source files in some other directory above, or I'm sorry, below the CMake lists. So I'm also going to need to create this readme.txt. Let's come back and do that. So in the readme.txt, I need a few things. And those things can also be found inside the assignment requirements. Oops, maybe. Uh, I thought I had that in here. So the things that should be inside the readme.txt include my name, uh, and I need to have information in there about who I am. Ah, yes, here it is. So all some assignment submissions must include a readme that contains my UA net ID, my name, my date, the assignment number, and a brief description of the submitted assignment. So let's go here and include name, Jonathan Sprinkle, net ID, 
Sprink JM. What else do I need? Date. Assignment number. And a brief description. So your mileage may vary. Your net ID, of course, will be different and the date will be different. And your description will describe, perhaps, uh, steps that you took or design decisions that you made. So now I have a readme.txt and a cmakelists.txt. Let's go into the source directory and create a cmakelists. So inside of this cmakelists, I'm going to refer back to uh, the assignment recommendation. So. I know that what's going to be graded is something called dot slash source slash assignment name. So my executable needs to be called assignment name. Let's go and look in the description of the assignment to see where that came from. So here's assignment zero, and somewhere down below it says the assignment name for this assignment is crow. So I'm going to be creating a target, an executable called crow. Add executable. The name of the executable is crow, and the file included is going to be main.c. So by the way, here I did add executable in all caps. It doesn't really matter in CMake whether you choose all caps or all lowercase. And I'm going to come back and do some more editing and editing in these CMakes in a few minutes, but for now we're just going to leave it as it is. Okay, so now I have the CMake in this directory, uh, but I haven't created this file main.c yet. Let's go ahead and touch main.c and edit main.c. So now I'm going to actually start doing some of the development for the assignment here. This is an extremely simple assignment, and so I'm going to be able to do this live while we're doing the demonstration. So I need to be able to take command line arguments here. And so I'm going to have a count of the arguments coming in, and then an array of all those arguments. So I like to go ahead and sketch out exactly what my main is going to be doing in advance. So let's go ahead and put some comments in here to describe what the main function is going to be doing. This function reads in the command line parameter if the number of, sorry, reads in the command line and calls the appropriate function depending on whether or not the system or the command line parameters match what is expected. If they do not match, we print a usage statement. Okay, so I'm going to go back and look at the description here. One more time. Go back and look at the description here of what we're supposed to be doing. So we're going to pass in a word and then repeat that word unless it's a special word like snow or corn, it's just going to be echoed with a new line. So I'm going to be receiving this uh, command line argument or and printing it out, or I'm going to be echoing uh, a, some usage statement. So we're going to define a couple of functions, and depending on those functions, we're going to do different things. So one of them is a function called usage. And print usage doesn't take any commands at all, so we don't really need to provide anything there. But this function has a defined behavior. And there are ways to define some of our other functions so that we can call them as a function, but we're not going to use those right now because uh, later in the course we're going to define how to pass 
uh, arrays of characters to another function, so we're just going to leave that alone for now. Okay, so the first thing that we check is do we have the correct number of parameters? So I'm going to just leave that as a placeholder for now, but I am going to print checking for correct number of parameters here, just so that we can have some debug information. So if arg c equals 2, then we have the correct number of parameters. Else, what do we do? Well, let's go back and look at the definition. If more than one word is provided, it should be echoed with just a new line. If no word is passed in, then a usage statement should be printed out that prints everything. So, we're now going to check to see else if argc is greater than 2. If argc is greater than 2, then we're just going to echo all those arguments back onto the line. If argc is equal to 2, So then we're going to check to see what special words we have if argc is equal to 2. We'll come back and finish that in just a moment. Else, print usage. So we're going to print the usage here because, oops, error not enough args printing usage statement. So now, uh, here we have argc is equal to 2, here we have argc is greater than 2, here we have essentially argc is equal to 1 because the number of arguments passed in includes the name of our function. So I haven't written any of these other functions yet, but I've sort of laid out by printfs exactly what they're going to be doing. And so in the interest of time, I'm going to skip actually implementing them now and check to see whether the system or whether the functions will compile correctly. So I've got here my main.c, cmakelists.txt. Here's my source, my readme, and my cmakelists. So I'm going to go ahead and make a build directory and go into build and run cmake in this directory. I'm oh, sorry, in the directory above me. So it's checking to see if everything is there. Now I get some errors that start to pop up in cmake. So when you submit your program, if we look here at the assignment requirements, we see that programs that fail to compile will receive a score of zero. Also, all assignment submissions should compile without warnings. So submissions that result in compiler warnings on the ECE3 server will incur a reduction of 5%. Let's go ahead and fix these things now so that we don't have problems with them when we do the submission. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add this dash w all option. So here inside of my source directory, I'm going to edit cmakelists.txt. Okay, so now we're going to set an option. And the option that we're going to set is through cmake the c flags. And it's that we want to pass w all. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and pass dash G as well. So dash G means that I want to enable debug for the executable that we're creating. So this is going to change the compiler options so that all warnings are flagged as errors, which is a good choice.